Hi, my name is Dave, and today I'd like to show you a, uh, I'm not sure if it's a classic telescope exactly. Uh, this is a telescope made by Malcolm Bird, a wonderful telescope maker. Anyway, he put this together. It does qualify as a classic because it has a unitron objective in it, so I'm going to call it a classic. Anyway, it's a very interesting telescope. I hope you enjoy looking at it. Don't confuse the Bird Telescope with the Unitron 132C from the 1970s, 1980s. The Unitron 132C um, has the tailpiece at the back, and that's where the eyepiece is. The Bird Telescope uh, has a sort of a figure four formation, and the eyepiece is uh, further up the tube, more like a Newtonian. Let me show you a few things about the way this telescope works. First of all, it's on a, an Altaz mount. Uh, the tube doesn't actually rotate within the cradle, so this would be very inconvenient on an equatorial mount for that reason, because um, you get into some very strange positions. But it's beautiful on an Altaz mount, like so. Ideally, it would be an Altaz mount with some sort of a go-to feature or something like that. That would be very, very nice. But this works uh, quite nicely. Let me give you another look at this side here. This is a folding mirror inside there. So there's a mirror on a stock, basically, down in there. Think of it as sort of like a secondary mirror in a Newtonian. And there are the adjustment screws for that. Back here, this is the mounting for the first folding mirror. The first folding mirror, and then you can rotate this and change the uh, alignment of things, so forth. Here's a look at the schematic for the scope. And check out these baffles. Very well baffled. When I first got the telescope, it didn't have a dew shield. So this is uh, the one thing on here that I made. <laughs> the dew shield, <laughs> it isn't much. Uh, there's the original Unitron 4-inch objective. This is a beautiful telescope. This is one of those green objectives. Premium quality Unitron objective. Beautiful image through this thing. Uh, and Malcolm took the trouble to get some really high quality folding mirrors. I think he said they're 20th wave or something like that. Uh, anyway, the 20th wave mirrors mean that this thing performs as if there were no mirrors, uh, more or less. You get a little bit of light loss and stuff, but the optical performance is not affected. And I can tell you that the optical performance on this thing is just absolutely beautiful, superb. It's, uh, it's almost as if the mirrors weren't there, to tell you the truth. The mirrors become effectively invisible. What's happening here is that the light comes in here, goes all the way through the tube, and bounces off a mirror there on the inside, comes up to the first, the second folding mirror. That's the first folding mirror, second folding mirror, which is basically at 45 degrees, bounces is out through here. So you have an unobstructed aperture still. It's a four inch refractor, but on a much more convenient mount. Now I've set up a uh, simulation of a four inch F15 refractor. Uh, similar is exactly what this would be, a little, bit, a little bit different maybe, but then of course this is not a real telescope. But just to give you an idea of how long that tube is, uh, you see where this tube is placed you're going to need, uh, maybe up here you can use it, but down here you're going to be crawling around on your knees to use this telescope. In addition to that, you're going to require a nice, big, tall, beefy mount with a lot of the mechanics that goes with that. This telescope, on the other hand, is a little bit more uh, user-friendly, shall I say. It's very easy to maneuver around. The nice thing, the sweet thing about this scope is that the eyepiece stays right here. No matter where you're looking, the eyepiece is at a convenient location, so it's very easy to use this telescope. I hope that illustrates my point. 
Okay, let's take a close-up look at this telescope. First of all, let's start with this objective. You can see the green reflection there. You can also see a little dust, no big deal. Anyway, there's the green reflection of the hallmark of the really fine 102 millimeter unitron objectives. There's the cell, it's got a collimatable cell. This is a genuine unitron cell. And Malcolm mounted it on a, I think it's a piece of PVC here. It's a standard inexpensive focuser. You don't need a two speed focuser on one of these with the long focal ratio. A single speed focuser is just fine. That light angle, the cone is very, very um, shallow, very, very long, so it doesn't matter. It's a beautiful. I think that's a 40 millimeter, maybe a 50 millimeter finder. Malcolm did a nice job on making this cradle. Look at the tail end of it. This mount is just a, an inexpensive Altez mount I had. Works fine. Here are the tools I'm going to need to collimate this telescope. First of all, a simple paper target. Um, bullseye kind of a deal. Screwdriver. Typical Collimating eyepiece, uh, Cheshire, and then a uh, laser. That's all I'll need. The basic idea of collimating any refractor is that you have an objective like this and a focuser like this. Um, usually they're separated by a tube. And that almost automatically gives you pretty good collimation right there. Uh, the longer the tube, uh, generally, the better it is. Anyway, if the, the main objective is to make sure that the optical axis of this lens, the objective lens, hits at the center of the focuser. Uh, and in addition to that, you want to make sure that the focuser is parallel to the optical axis. Normally with a traditional refractor, that's really not a big deal at all. It's almost automatic. Uh, with the shorter and faster ones, it can become an issue where you need to have uh, special adjustment bolts. But I found that most, like F15 refractors, just simply don't need to be touched. They're close enough. Uh, now, in a folded refractor, you've got exactly the same demand. You want the optical axis of the primary to go right through somehow and get to the uh, mechanical axis of the focuser and thus to the optical axis of the eyepieces that might be in it. And you want that to be everything to be parallel. The mirrors, you would like the mirrors and whatever's in between here to be completely uh, invisible. You'd like them to disappear. You don't want them to uh, do anything to the figure. You don't want them to do anything to the uh, optical performance. You don't want them to vignette, which is actually uh, probably one of the more important things. As long as you have good flats, they're not going to introduce any curvature or anything else like that. Like the, you know, the traditional flat you have in a Newtonian doesn't do anything. It just, it becomes invisible except for the, uh, it, the fact that it obscures some of the aperture. Well, in this case, with the folding flats, you don't have any worry about obscuring any of the aperture. Um, you just have to make sure that they're lined up so everything comes out straight. And it's not as complicated as you might think. Let me show you how to collimate this scope. 
First of all, use the mask and tape that uh, as precisely as possible right over the objective itself. And get as centered as possible. That should do. And now, now we use the laser. Turn the laser on. You can see that I'm pretty darn close, of course. And notice that as I rotate the laser, it does wobble a little bit. But when you lock it down, it's uh, pretty close to dead center. It's off just a little bit. Anyway, uh, for the preliminary first step here, what we're going to do is uh, let me just demonstrate how that actually looks. Let's manipulate the second folding mirror and the adjustment bolts are here so we'll loosen this thing up a little bit then you can rotate this ever so slightly I'm not rotating much you probably can't even see it on the camera but I'm rotating it ever so slightly rotating that and you can probably see that um, so I rotate that until I get this thing where I want and then of course when I tighten it down it's going to mess it up a little bit that's just standard operating procedure with such devices. Malcolm did a good job on this. It's just part of the part of the game that when you make these adjustments, you're gonna throw things off just a bit. Okay. Let's do that a little further. Yeah, that's going to be better, I think. Getting pretty close. The trick is when you tighten it down, you want it to be where you, where you want it to be. All right, we're pretty close there. So that's uh, that's the easy way. Let me try the same tricks back in the back here. There are three similar kinds of adjustment screws. Loosen it up and I can rotate this thing one way or the other. And I think you can see Pretty darn close here. Off just a little. I can maybe tweak that in right there. Okay, and I could get more precise if I wanted to. That's probably going to be good enough. This is an F15 refractor. They don't have to be absolutely perfect will work just fine even if they're not 100% right we're not done yet there are two other things to consider here first of all in the process of doing that have I introduced any vignetting the mirrors are oversized deliberately um, but it's still possible you could be a little off one edge or something. So it's important to check that. I'll just go around the objective with my finger to make sure I can see the entire objective. Yeah, I can see the entire objective. And if I can't, I can always uh, uh, redo some adjustments. Play. I've got lots of degrees of freedom here to play with. So, now I've got that all set up. I'm still not done with the collimation because I have to make sure that the objective is collimated with the everything else so what I'm going to do is well it depends on your preference some people will use the laser for that I find it very hard to see the laser reflected laser beam coming back it's there but it's very very faint um, Cheshire it's a nice bright, bright flashlight This is exactly as you would do with any other 
refractor. Play, play the adjustment games with the three push-pull bolts. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at three reflections and the reflections are coming from the surfaces of the objective and I'm just adjusting things a little bit until I get everything all lined up. Alright, so we're pretty much dead on now, um, and it'll, it'll give me very, very good performance. So I'm good to go. I've got all my collimation adjustments done. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at this wonderful Unitron 4-inch folded refractor. Thank you very much for watching.